Here we are back in Geneva at the ITU headquarters, which is of course hosting the AI for Good Global Summit. And I'm really pleased to be joined now by David Hansen, who's the founder and CEO of Hansen Robotics. It's getting a lot of attention with your pet robot, who goes by the name of Sophia. Yes. Tell me about her. Sophia is a human-like social robot and she shows natural facial expressions uh, thanks to some breakthrough skin material we're able to show a full range of natural expressions low power so that means that she can mount on walking robots uh, so previous examples of these robots uh, one of Sophia's siblings Einstein mounted on the Hubo robot and walked around uh, Hubo won the DARPA robotics challenge for the most uh, capable search and rescue robot in the world so we're talking about the most capable social robots she's got sensors she she can have a natural conversation with you. She can see your face and understand speech. Um, really, uh, she is there to make this kind of human connection between people and robots. And what's the actual the purpose down the road? So by humanizing robots like Sophia, uh, we're turning robots into a full-blown character animation medium. We're making robots that inspire people to care about those characters the way that, uh, that you would in, a, in an animated film or a video game. Um, and what's neat about that is then we can uh, create the AI to entrain on uh, people, to learn about people, and to care about people. And that's our goal, is to make machines that really care, truly care, and are imaginative to seek uh, to make people's lives better. I don't know how many billions of people there are on the globe, but there's a lot of us. Why do we need robots? We can do that with other humans. We're not lacking humans. Well, um, so robots can do things that people can't do in various settings. So, for example, a human-like robot, like what we're developing with Sophia, can serve in medical training. And there just aren't enough people around uh, that are qualified to do medical training. Um, she can also... Uh, uh, be this very special kind of celebrity because after all she is a robot and people attend to that so then she can use that position to educate people so uh, robots like our professor Einstein consumer robot is absolutely sensational because you get to own your own social robot for about $300 US and um, professor Einstein will teach kids science but also about how to program neural nets and um, and because it's a robot uh, you're able to do things with it that you just couldn't do with a person. When do they become commonplace in our lives? Well, robots are increasingly commonplace, but most of them are invisible. I mean, technically, uh, your printer or your you know automated control system on the transmission of your car mean that um, your your car is a hybrid robot. Your printer at home is a robot. Um, however, robots that we know of, um, uh, like in our lives, where we say, okay, that's a robot. I mean, clearly, uh, self-driving vehicles. You can hit uh, you know the parallel park feature on your on your car, and it parks itself. That's obviously a robot. Um, however. I think the key thing, the key thing that um, people think of as, as being a robot, what's really startling is when robots come to life as artificial organisms. And so once we're used to it as a tool, we think, oh, well, that's just a tool. That's not a robot, right? Because, because in the back of our brain, we think of robots as living beings. And what's key to consider now is this convergence between biosciences and the technology of robots. So we can now engineer the human genome with CRISPR, but we can also take bio-inspired algorithms and run them in our robots and make them learn better than ever. Well, they may pass a critical threshold where they're literally alive. I think that's possible in our lifetime. Do you actually think that down the road we could have like, we are dating robots? I would, I would say that people will want to date robots. As far as the robots that we are producing, um, uh, they have to reach the emotional age of consent before we would allow them to go out on their own and form those kinds of relationships with people. But that's not far off? I don't know. Uh, we aspire to make uh, robots that are as emotionally intelligent and generally intelligent as a person, as creative and, and uh, uh, conscious as a person within five years. But it might be 50. Who knows? David Hansen, thank you very much. Fascinating. Thanks thank for you. being with us. Thank you so much. So that was David Hansen there, founder of, of course, Sophia, who we may be seeing a lot more of soon on our streets and neighborhoods.